Alrighty, Helldivers, welcome back to another Helldivers 2 video. Today we're going to be doing something slightly different that I haven't done so far for this game. But if you're like me and you're struggling with performance on Helldivers 2 right now, but you know you think your PC can handle it and maybe you can jump that FPS counter just a little bit, well, I'm here to give you some good news. I have, think I have found some settings that you guys will want to see. So if you go on to like the video, Make sure you leave a like for the algorithm and subscribe for democracy because Helldivers 2 is starting to take over my life right now and I'm about to show you guys some of what I believe are the best settings to improve performance whilst trying to retain as much visual quality as possible. So without further ado, let's get into it. Alright then, so we're going to start in the display settings because these are some of the fundamentals that you guys should be getting right, right off the rip here. Um, first of all, if you're uh, if you're using HDR, if you have a monitor that has HDR, make sure you've got this turned off. Mine is seemingly off by default. Uh, camera shake strength. Do you know what? I haven't bothered tinkering with this, but it really doesn't, you know, kind of impact the the overall FPS of your game. So you can set this to whatever you like. I, I've left this on a default medium, but perhaps turn it off if it's basically the the equivalent of of motion blur I'm, i might get ridiculed in the comments but it's all good it's all good it's all good uh next up we've got vertical field of view now this if you turn this down obviously you can, you're going to see less of the environment around you that might cause a few issues when you're out in the uh, in the various worlds you might not have as much peripheral vision and you might prefer that uh so if you want to turn this down, go ahead and do so. I think the standard was like around about 70, I believe, when I first booted the game. But I've got it on max. If you turn this down, then you're likely uh, going to see some improvement in your FPS because you're not rendering in as much of the environment as you thought you were doing beforehand. So turn this down, give that a go. If that's the only thing you want to tinker with, then have at it. Uh, I don't know how much FPS difference you're going to get there. We'll give it a go. Next up, obviously, always make sure your graphics card is selected by default. Um, I've never had a problem with this. Screen device, that's whatever your default monitor is. And obviously, resolution. Set this to your native resolution. If it isn't your native resolution for some reason, make sure you do so. Now, this is where the performance bump, if you like, is primarily going to be seen from. Now... I had my render scale on native, which of course is going to take that 2560 by 1440p, very crisp, very sharp image coming from my GPU to the monitor in the native resolution that my monitor is. But that means that your system is going to have to render an image at 1440p, and of course, depending on your hardware, as well as the monitor you're using, that could be quite difficult to do, especially for a game like this. So. If you want to play around with two of the quality settings, my recommendation is that you give quality a go. And we're going to have a look at some other settings that will impact the difference between quality and ultra quality in a moment. But I haven't seen much of a difference between ultra quality apart from a couple of additional FPS drop. So you guys can try that. But for me, I recommend saying give quality a go. Okay. Next up. Full screen, always playing full screen, unless, of course, you're tabbing out all the time, which you shouldn't be doing. You should be focused on eradicating the automatons and the terminates. Uh, next up, uh, frame rate limit. Have this turned off, of course. Um, that way you get as much juice out of your system as possible. Um, it's not the same as V-Sync. Obviously, if you set a frame rate limit, you can limit this to just above your your FPS view monitor or on it. It's, it's entirely up to you guys. Um... Frame rate limit, obviously, because it's turned off. It's limited to 144, which is interesting because uh, my monitor is 165, and I have a feeling that's potentially something to do with what Sony have done um, behind the scenes when they've made this game, obviously, because it's it's made for PlayStation. Um, so, you know, I, I'm not entirely sure. Perhaps, perhaps that will go higher eventually, but I doubt it. Next up, V-Sync. Have this turned off. Keep V-Sync off. That way, again, just a bit like frame rate limit, you get as much, you know, FPS out of your system as possible. It allows your GPU to kind of, you know, really go at it and give you as many frames as possible. My graphics preset is currently set to custom. However, um, I had my graphics preset on medium. There was one additional setting that I did make a change to, and I highly recommend that you go with a medium setting um, to start with and use the quality render quality okay 
That way, you should be able to get the most amount of FPS out of your system without making the game look trash in the process. And as you can see in the game, if you've put the hours in, the game is beautiful. The environments are stunning, even down to the render quality on the Terminators and the Automatons. If you get really up close and personal, you can really make out the details. And that way, what I'm trying to do is give you guys the best performance possible without ruining the quality of the game entirely. And I've had to mess around with quite a few of these settings just to try and get the kind of FPS that I should be getting at the moment. So let's go down the list here. Depth of field, I leave this turned on. Bloom, you can turn this on or off. I'm not entirely sure whether that makes any difference whatsoever. I'm pretty sure Bloom is serious, is just cosmetic, um, but I have this turned off. Uh, sharpness, you can turn this up or down, but by default, when I had it set to medium, it was on 0.75. I don't think it goes uh, any higher than that. I, I can't remember. Next up, nitty gritty, here we go. So, texture quality, medium. Object detail quality, also set this to medium. Look, if you check this, select level of geometry of detail, lower values increase CPU performance at the cost of silhouette detail and objects. Now, this game is highly GPU intensive. Um, in terms of the amount of CPU usage I've been getting out of my system, I don't think I've ever seen it go above between 65 and 70%. Now, this could just be because I'm playing at 1440p, but it could also be the way the game has been inherently designed. There's a lot of focus on these effects down here that are highly GPU driven. So if you've got a GPU, let's say you're using a 30 series NVIDIA card like I am, I'm using a 3080 then you might find that your 30 series is pretty much where you top out with most of your performance. Unless, of course, you're, you're lucky to have a, um, a 40 series graphics card. Um, then you might be getting a bit more performance for your book. But moving on here, render distance. This is also important. It does improve CPU performance if you turn this down. Obviously, if you render a shorter distance, your system is going to not have to work quite as hard to be able to pump out those additional frames that you guys are going to be wanting. But again, when I'm playing at 1440, perhaps that's why I'm getting additional GPU um, usage compared to somebody who's potentially on a 1080p system, which traditionally is more CPU intensive at a lower resolution. But if you guys have got any feedback on that, be sure to let me know down in the comments how you're faring. Next up, shadow quality. Now, if you turn shadows down entirely, yes, you are going to bump up your performance um, because, as we all know, if you turn shadows off and reflections off um, pretty much entirely, then yes, you, you are going to see a noticeable increase. It could be different for all systems, but traditionally, if you turn that off, everyone's going to see a bump of some sort. By how much? It's entirely dependent on your system. But I really don't want my game to look trash. And when you're playing in dark environments and you're trying to immerse yourself, then if immersion is what you're going for, don't turn it off to the lowest of the low. But if you want the game to look like a slideshow, go ahead, turn everything down to low. But that's your choice. I really don't recommend doing that at all. The game looks horrendous. Next up, particle quality. Uh, this obviously changes the particle effects on screen. Things like um, when, when you're about to extract and your lander's coming down and you've got things like sparks coming out of the back. Uh, from the exhaust, for example, they'll just be, you know, really poorly looking sparks that are coming out the back. Whereas if you've got this turned up a little bit, great. Uh, things like the bugs nests, um, anything to do with anything spewing out in the environment. So the bugs particularly, you know, the game's going to look awful if you turn this down to low. Next up, um, reflection. So... Uh, on the reflections, yes, there's there's quite a few surfaces that are you know watery or icy, but you can turn this down if you wish. It's merely cosmetic, but again, like I said, I'm going for a, a balance of trying to get as much juice out for your system as possible without the game looking horrendous. Space quality, I have this turned down to the lowest of the low. I'm not really bothered about looking at the stars, guys. I'm supposed to be looking at what's in front of me, and if I end up getting beamed by a terminid, or an automaton because I'm looking at the sky, then there's definitely, definitely questionable reasons as to why I'm a hell diver. Uh, ambient occlusion here. Um, this obviously gives you the the element of, of realistic ambient lighting, making nearby surfaces occlude some of the light. 
If you want to turn this to off, I recommend you doing so. The same with screen space global illumination. It will improve GPU performance, and if your system is struggling, this is definitely something to turn off. I highly recommend you turn this off. Vegetation and rubble density, there's a high focus on, obviously, visually stunning environments in this game. So there's a lot of vegetation on some of the uh, planets that you get to explore, as well as a lot of rubble. So this will have an impact on performance. So turn this down to a level that you find acceptable, as well as trying to get as much performance out as possible. I know I've repeated this numerous times over and again. Yeah, Shadow, you're just talking about trying to get as much performance out of your system over and over again. Yes, we get it. Yeah, but this is the important thing. If you want this game to look good, and you don't want it to look horrendous, but you want to get decent performance, then these are the settings I recommend. Terrain quality kind of goes hand in hand with uh, terrain render quality as well. It's very similar. Volumetric fog and clouds, these two are also kind of, they do impact your GPU performance and always have done. And the same with lighting, but please don't turn lighting down to the lowest of the low. If you do that, the game is going to look horrendous. And, you know, especially if you're playing on a lower resolution monitor, like a 1080p, perhaps um, you'll find that you don't really need to turn some of these down to the lowest of the low. But if you're playing at a higher resolution, perhaps, then I would recommend leaving these on medium. Finally, the secret source on all of this. Like I was just saying about the different planets that are involved in this game. You've got different types of edges different objects you've got man-made objects you've got the planetary objects you've got obviously the environment itself in there that have got different types of polygons that are, are dotted around the map anti-aliasing is super important to smoothen those jagged edges and if you're doing anything at medium or lower than that then you might find that you get your increase in performance that you're looking for but if you've got anti-aliasing turned on you're still going to make the game look somewhat acceptable. You can try this with low, but I do highly recommend you sit with medium. Now, anti-aliasing is a CPU post-processing effect, but if you've got a decent CPU, which I suspect you would if you're playing this game, you'll be able to handle it, and that way you'll get a really good balance between how good the game looks versus the amount of FPS you're getting in the game. Finally, async compute. I think this is a AMD thing. I'm pretty sure it is. Um, if you've got an AMD GPU, let me know down in the comments. Does async compute affect your system overall? I know it affected mine, um, but that could just be because I don't have an AMD GPU in my system. I'm not entirely sure how async compute actually works. But what I did do is I, I, I had this turned on when I was on the bridge looking out across the stars, which is where typically you get the majority of your, of your FPS from when you're in space. Um, and I noticed about a 10 to 15 FPS drop just in space looking out compared to when I had this turned off. So if that's anything to go by, you should see an improvement if you have this turned off following these settings whilst you're in the game as well. Anyway, guys, that is going to be my best settings guide for boosting your FPS in Helldivers 2. If this video goes on to help you out in any way, shape, or form, I would really appreciate a like for the algorithm so that this video gets out to as many people as possible. And if you do like these sorts of videos, then hit subscribe. It really does help, and it costs you absolutely nothing in order to do that. Thank you guys so much for watching today. I really do appreciate your time and support. I'll catch you all in the next one.